lying to the FBI. The White House caught by surprise. Flynn has now agreed to cooperate with the special counsel. Brian Ross tonight on whether Flynn will testify against President Trump. And this evening, Jared Kushner and what we've learned about him. Also breaking at this hour, your money, your taxes, President Trump's tax plan. The showdown in the Senate at this hour, does he have the votes? We're live on the Hill. The verdict in tonight, the outrage. The undocumented immigrant acquitted of murdering Kate Steinle, who was walking with her father. The fallout today. Breaking news in the search for the teenager believed to have run off with a high school soccer coach. What we have just learned. The holiday warning about packages arriving at your front door. You're about to see the neighbors who jumped in. And my three sons, the father and the unbelievable milestone, who is our person of the week. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night. And we begin tonight with Michael Flynn and his guilty plea. President Trump's former national security advisor admitting he lied to the FBI. Arriving with his wife at federal court in Washington, already processed and fingerprinted as part of his plea. With the deal, Flynn is now agreeing to cooperate with the special counsel. Could that mean Flynn will testify against the president? We begin with ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. He was once one of the president's closest advisors, one of his first major appointments. But today, as General Michael Flynn walked out of court in Washington, protesters chanted, lock him up. An echo of Flynn's own words about Hillary Clinton. Right. Lock her up! Flynn pleaded guilty today to lying to the FBI, telling associates he is prepared to testify, if needed, against President Trump and others in the White House. How many more figures have to be brought to justice because of their ties with Russia uh, before we end up connecting all these centers? Flynn now admits he lied about his conversations with the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, during the transition period. The White House had claimed it was unaware of the substance of those conversations. But today's court documents show Flynn was acting with the knowledge of senior transition team officials. The first example, on the same day President Obama imposed tough sanctions on Russian facilities in the U.S. for medley in the election, the Russian ambassador contacted Flynn. Flynn then consulted with a senior transition team official who said the Trump team did not want Russia to escalate the situation, a request Flynn then made directly to the ambassador. Putin did not retaliate, and President-elect Trump then tweeted, great move by Vladimir Putin. I always knew he was very smart. The documents also show that a very senior official on the transition team told Flynn to contact the Russian ambassador about a UN resolution involving Israel. Tonight we are learning that very senior official was the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner. The president has insisted he did not tell Flynn to make the contacts with Russia. No, I didn't direct him, but I would have directed him if he didn't do it, okay? But according to a confidant of Flynn's, he is prepared to testify that Trump did direct him to contact the Russians during the transition, initially as a way to work together against ISIS. It's at odds with what he has been saying publicly from day one. The plea documents also suggest Mueller's investigation may be focused on President Trump's firing of FBI Director James Comey. Flynn lied to the FBI on January 24th. On January 26th, Acting Attorney General Sally Yates told the White House he had lied. The very next day, January 27th, the President, on short notice, invited the FBI Director to a private dinner. The dinner was an effort to build a relationship. In fact, he asked specifically of loyalty in the context of asking me to stay. Two weeks later, Flynn was fired, and Comey says the president later asked him to go easy on the general. I understood him to be saying that what he wanted me to do was drop any investigation connected to Flynn's account of his conversations with the Russians. Even after Flynn was gone, the president still praised him. General Flynn is a wonderful man. I think it's really a sad thing that he was treated so badly. And David, a clarification tonight on something one of Flynn's confidants told us and we reported earlier today. He said the president had asked Flynn to contact Russia during the campaign. He's now clarifying that, saying, according to Flynn, candidate Trump asked him during the campaign to find ways to repair relations with Russia and other hotspots. And then after the election, the president-elect asked him to, and told him to contact Russia on issues, including working together to fight ISIS, David. Before and after. And in the meantime, Brian, we do have a statement from Michael Flynn tonight. Uh, he said, I accept full responsibility for my actions. 
That's right. And uh, Flynn's confidant says Flynn's extremely angry at the White House tonight that he was going broke with crippling legal fees and made this deal for his family. His son, Michael Jr., had also been under investigation, but he was not charged today, David. All right, Brian Ross leading us off tonight. Brian, thank you. We also have a swift response from President Trump's lawyer tonight. Did the White House know that this was coming? Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. This was the only glimpse of President Trump today before the television cameras, ignoring questions about the indictment of his former national security advisor. Mr. President, any comment on Michael Flynn being indicted, sir? A few minutes later, the White House abruptly canceled a planned photo op with the Libyan prime minister, avoiding questions altogether. The Flynn indictment cuts close to the president. He was the most prominent former national security official advising the Trump campaign. Donald J. Trump. And he played a key role in the transition, taking part in president-elect Trump's classified briefings before his vital role inside the White House. But the president's lawyer today sought to downplay Flynn's role, saying in a statement, today Michael Flynn, a former national security advisor at the White House for 25 days during the Trump administration and a former Obama administration official, entered a guilty plea. Nothing about the guilty plea or the charge implicates anyone other than Mr. Flynn. John Carl with us from the White House tonight. And John, did the White House have any indication this guilty plea was coming down or were they taken by surprise with this? Top officials at the White House, the president's legal team and the president himself, David, learned of this when they read it in the news. So the news of this indictment and more importantly, the news that Michael Flynn has agreed to cooperate fully came as a surprise today. John Carl with us tonight. John, thank you. And this evening, the question, how damaging could this development be for President Trump himself. We know that Michael Flynn has now pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about conversations with the Russian ambassador. But many have pointed out, don't all incoming presidents and their teams start to reach out to other countries during the transition? Let's get to Dan Abrams tonight, our chief legal analyst. And Dan, we get it. Lying to the FBI is no good. But many people have pointed out that these transition teams often reach out to other governments. So what is it about this conversation that's a problem? Part of it is the timing. Uh, President Obama had just issued sanctions against the Russians for meddling in the election. Then you have Flynn effectively calling the Russians and saying, please don't retaliate. And then you have President Trump saying, oh, it's great that President Putin didn't retaliate. You could argue that's a technical violation of something called the Logan Act, which prevents a private citizen from intervening in, in foreign affairs. But I think it's unlikely they're going to rest it on that. And we both know that the Logan Act hasn't successfully been prosecuted really ever. ever. So uh, again, why lie about the conversation at all? That's the big question. And I think what they're looking at is, were there any conversations with the Russians, not during the transition, but during the campaign? And was there any coordination with them that could be deemed to be criminal? Dan Abrams with us tonight. Dan Abrams, thanks as always. And one more question on this. Michael Flynn pleaded guilty to one count of lying as part of this deal. It's believed he could have faced more, but instead will cooperate now with Robert Mueller. So let's go right to ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas. He's live at the FBI tonight. And Pierre Flynn has been charged with that one count of lying to the FBI. Robert Mueller, a seasoned prosecutor here. Is he trying to show as little of his hand as possible? David, make no mistake, Mueller approved this deal to get something. He's an aggressive KZ prosecutor who's been targeting the Trump campaign, the transition, and potentially the White House inner circle. Flynn now faces hours of FBI interrogations in the coming months, subject to lie detector tests along the way to prove he's telling the truth. Mueller wants to know, did Trump campaign officials and White House advisors know about any contacts with the Russians to impact the election? And David, those transition advisors mentioned in today's charges face the possibility of being called before a grand jury. And if they've already been interviewed, they better have told the truth. David? Pierre Thomas with us tonight as well. Pierre, thank you. We move on on this Friday evening to your money, your taxes, and President Trump's tax plan. The Senate showdown at this hour. Does the president have the votes? The Republicans believe he does. And tonight, the bottom line for you, the math. How will the middle class fare? And what about writing off local and state taxes, property taxes? Tonight, look at this map. These are the states where more than 30% of filers claim those state and local deductions. Income taxes were taken out.